Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Be holy, be perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. Be holy, be perfect community. We want to remember that we are a community of believers, a community of saints, uh, consecrated to God for the purpose of what? Being holy and coming into full maturity, full maturity and perfection in Christ in the image and likeness of God, according to his word in Genesis 1, 27 and Genesis uh, chapter 2. So as we uh, continue to look at God's blueprint, let us not forget, let us not forget that we are his handiwork. You know, I love uh, the saying in uh, Psalms 139, and 14 where he say that <laughs> I am God's handiwork. I'm his handiwork. I'm his mighty uh, um, art. I am a work of art of God. I am a mighty work of art of God. And he has fixed that blueprint where I am. I, I am. We have to confess that over ourselves. We have to proclaim and decree this over ourselves that we are a great work of art of God, that what he has made, what he has made is beautiful, is wonderful, is excellent. It is who he have created us to be. And if we have been damaged, if that, that mighty work of art has been damage, then we look to God to uh, transform it back into that wonderful artwork, that wonderful craftsmanship that he has created. So we are master design. We are a master design. And let us uh, thank God for being a master design that he designed uh, with his own hand and breathed the breath of life within us. Now, as we continue with God's biblical identity blueprint, we're going to talk uh, today in uh, the second uh, category is obedience and righteousness. And this is part two, part two. So as we look at this, <laughs> that's a typo again. Uh, as we look at this, we look in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Isaiah chapter 56. Deuteronomy 28 and 9. The law will establish you as a people holy to himself and he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the lord your god and walk in his ways he has sworn this he's sworn this to who to the people that are obedient that keep his commandments and walk in his ways to walk in god's ways is to walk in the ways of godly righteousness of holy righteousness this is what it means here this is what it means he has sworn that he will do this he has sworn to the people that will be obedient that will walk in righteousness that he will establish them that means that he will make you make me make his people successful in all that they put their hands to that he will cause us to be successful so we don't have to worry there may be times when things are don't look uh like it's going well but believe that when god put his word to something that he will do it his word will not return to him void his word will not to return to him void what he sent his word out to do it will be accomplished and he has sent his word to those that are obedient and walk in righteousness what he has to establish them as a people holy to himself this is what god has done this is what he has created in creating us as uh, forming our identity so that we will be conformed to his image and likeness. How how wonderful. And if we can see that he said that he will establish you, me, as holy to him who? To himself. He will establish us holy unto himself when we are obedient and when we walk in righteousness. So don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. If you um, fall into sin, uh, repent, 
be restored and let the Lord continue to uh, create in you his image and his likeness. Isaiah 56 and 6. Also, the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him and to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keep the Sabbath, who keep the Sabbath so as not to profane it and who hold fast to what? To my covenant. Who hold fast to what? My covenant. By what? By conscious obedience. So the only way that we can hold fast to the covenant of God is through what? Through obedience. Through obedience and obedience lead to what? Obedience leads to righteousness. Obedience leads to righteousness. Obedience produces righteousness and holiness. This is the only way that we all can be righteous is through obedience. What he says that what Abraham believed and God counted it to him as righteousness. Some of us, we misunderstand that. We just think that we believe uh, some idea in the sky that we are made righteous. That is not it. Abraham believed God and his belief was a faithful belief and everything that God told him to do, he did. And that what? That was evident of his faith. That was evident in what he believed. His action showed what he believed and because of his action or his response to what he believed, his actions of what he believed, God counted that as righteousness. So let's not twist it and let's not be deceived thinking just because I believe something with no actions, with no, uh, no uh, change in lifestyle uh, that God has imputed to us righteousness. No, it must be a uh, what? By conscious obedience, by conscious obedience to his covenant. So we must keep the covenant of God. We cannot turn away from the covenant of God and think <laughs> that it's going to be okay or go well with us. It's not. It's not. And it's a wonderful thing to be in covenant with the Almighty God. Let me say that again. It's a wonderful thing to be in the covenant of the Almighty God, to be in covenant with God, to be in covenant with God so that we can obey him consciously, so that we can obey him with wisdom and understanding, so that we are coming into the image of God image of God and to his likeness so that we we will not only know that it is a difference going on in us and through us but all those who come in contact with us will see God in us will see the image of Christ in us and again remember that the image is the attributes is love and kindness is long suffering is mercy is good judgment sound judgment it is uh, holiness is consecration that's what uh, these attributes are, is mercy. Mercy is a powerful thing. So Isaiah 56 and 7, all these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house, my house will be called a house of prayer for all people. My house will be called a house of prayer for all people. See, all people mean all obedient people. All people mean all obedient people. See, we cannot disconnect uh, this verse from the verse of, uh, a previous verse, which is six. So we have to continue with what God is saying. And he's talking about conscious obedience. He's referring to his house being a place of prayer for those who are obedient to him. So we can't this. Sometimes we uh, have a tendency to take scriptures and take them out of context uh, because it kind of fit what we really want to uh, get across to somebody, even though it's been taken out of context. So let's stay within the context and the confines in which God has God's word require of us. Now, he uh, he is saying that his house, the house of prayer of God is a holy house. It's a, it's a house. <laughs> it's a house that 
brings joy. It's a house that brings joy. Listen to what I'm saying. It's a house that is a joyful house that brings joy. So we should have joy in the house of the Lord. We should have joy in the house of the Lord. What, what precedes that joy? He said, I will bring to my holy mountain. So God's place, his house is a holy place. He will bring what? He will bring what? He will bring us to his holy place. He will bring us to his holy place. He will fill us with joy because we have been obedient and followed him to this place of prayer. So wherever God is, there must we must understand their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. So prayer, and he's relating that to prayer, Prayer, prayer is a sacrifice. Prayer is an offering. It's like a burnt offering unto God when we are what? When we are in right relationship, referring to uh, the first uh, blue uh, identity blueprint, uh, which is what? Which is what? Which is what? It is relationship. And we know that we can't have relationship with God unless we are obedient to God. So obedient as part two of, of this, obedient and righteousness. That is the next step. In order to stay and remain in relationship with the Lord, we must be what? We must be obedient and we must be righteous. We must be righteous. We must be righteous. We must be in right standing and right relationship with the Lord our God. So Jesus tell us that what? We should be perfect for our Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus was obedient what? He was obedient unto death. So it, our requirement is the same. So let us, let us, let us, the people of God, the people of God, the people that are obedient to God, that have a desire to live in righteousness and in right standing with God, let us ever, ever, ever bless the Lord for what he has done. So as we continue on, let us remember, jot them down, jot the identity blueprints down, jot them down so we will know what they are so that we can look at them and align ourselves with them. And then we'll know if we are where we are, where we are in our relationship relationship with God, even if we have a relationship with God or do not have a relationship with God. So let us what? Let us learn and be obedient to the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you peace. May we bless the Lord with all our heart and all our soul. May we bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord.